Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, my goodness. Comments are blowing up. Thank you so much for everybody commenting today. We are with our I'd Back That Kickstarter. <laughs> I'm Glory Hound. This is Greg. How you doing? Greg and Nixon. we are missing Dr. Glory Hog. Like but he's in the comments. We, but it's like we can only have like one of you yes. here at the same time now. Next week is just going to be me happening? and Glory Hog. <laughs> <laughs> I love, though, that he's in the oh comments and he's like, gosh. stop waving like a weirdo. I didn't realize I was waving. <laughs> well, you know, we had to do our, our Instagram pre-show to the show. So, like, That's I right. mean, you got to do that. The show Jeez. before the show. Let me see if I can make these bigger. I got I got a new commenting thing, and I can't see all of them. Super great. I'm going to have to, like, squint at them. It's going to be amazing. He's doing this. Yeah, I apologize. Real, real close in advance. That's yeah. what's happening. Okay. So, let's see here. We are going to be talking about Papillon today. We're going to be talking about Endangered. We're going to be talking about Ignite. We're going to be talking about Marquee. I would also like to say thank you so much for the people that did support us on Ko-Fi this week. We had Vincent. We had, who was it from Thing M -M. 12 Game? Yeah, and we had MM. Like, thank you so much. We're looking to get some wireless microphones and stuff like that to do interviews and stuff at Origins and Gen Con and stuff. So, like, there are reasons for things. <laughs> this stuff's not free. That's right. So we appreciate all of your guys' help. And we have Colossal Games in the chat on Facebook and stuff. Oh, fantastic. So if you Thank have you so much. For them, also, Dr. Glory Hog, I am not single. I apologize. Yeah, I do have somebody who I am married <laughs> to. <single>. Um, <laughs> yeah, so a taken. Totally taken. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. First up, we have Papillon. Now, Papillon is by Colossal Games. It is for one to four players. It's going to last about 30 to 45 minutes. And the base price for this is going to be $39. Now, Greg, that's right in your <laughs> <laughs> special hey, little hey. little section How of I, I back the, that. The cheapskate, like. Uh, a label <laughs> over here. <laughs> no, this is affordable. I mean, you know, th it's not uncommon that Kickstarters these days they've crept up in price. You know, they have. They're getting quite expensive, especially when you have all of the minis and stuff yeah, in there. Yeah, it seems like you know? the average game's seventy bucks, and they go up from there. And that's so, right. Yeah, it's nice to see something that's not going to break the bank. I like to think our our viewers are like us. <laughs> Funds are limited, <laughs> and they can't pay for everything. Well, exactly. You can't yeah. buy everything. And it is a tough market out there because you have a ton of really great games. And, I mean, you can only do so much. You can only do so much with them, you know? Yeah. All right. This one here. We got to play at, what was it, Dice Tower West? Yeah, I was going to ask you because you played it. I did yeah. it. Yeah. So I was like going to come and just listen. I want to so hear excited. your experience because I know what my impressions this are. This game but you was actually so it. much fun. Okay. This game here I thought was really interesting for, number one, it's amazing once you have it set up. Like once you get all the little 3D flowers up and everything, and you can actually go and check out my Instagram where I have all the, th here they are, the 3D yeah. flowers. Like, as I was walking by, it was like total stop in yeah, the lane. I was like, um, what is this? What is what's happening over here? Which a lot of times is a great way to not only bring people into games, but also at conventions, if you're bringing this to conventions, it's a great way to bring people to your table at a convention yeah. and then trap them there for the rest of the convention. Okay, wow. so just as a note, Jeez. as a note. Handcuff them, lock them in your if basement. You're, yeah, if you're looking to trap people <laughs> to play games. <laughs> People. To play games with you. This is this they is how you do like it. They need like one of those Venus flytraps, <laughs> based off of you what you're saying. Like one of the like cardboard things, <laughs> like your butterfly actually gets stuck inside. So, initially you're like, yeah, 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 okay, it's the draw, 3D flowers, yeah, what's up, you know? No, how about the gameplay? It looks like there's game there right? to me, yeah. There is. There's a lot of game there, and yeah. I feel like if they hadn't done the points mechanics in this in the way that they did, which is lovely because it creates a very friendly overall tone to it and it keeps with the butterfly theme and everything. But this could have been the most, like, ruthless butterfly game ever <laughs> if they did, hadn't have done the points the way they did because it has area control in it. It has this amazing tile choice system where you put out, out all the tiles here and then when you start choosing them, that line goes away. So you do it 
like horizontally or vertically, and then those tiles get right. taken away. And then you've essentially shorted other people tiles in right. that. But they do have you make it up by sometimes you'll get little caterpillars and those choices will become a little bit harder. And then in the rock in the middle, you end up getting things for that as well. So they kind of tried to even it out. But I love that particular tile choosing system in any game that I've seen it in because it makes your choices so hard between what you need versus like yeah. what's left I out like there. I like that bidding that you have to do right? to choose the order that you pick. Do I mess with somebody's game or do I take what I need? <laughs> Let's see here. The Garden Predator module makes the game more cutthroat, says Colossal Games. Oh, Colossal Games, you're just making this better for me. <laughs> I mean, come on. You want an all-out butter <laughs> butterfly like <laughs> battle royale. And MM says like like I sound like Alcatraz. Dude, okay, so it's the fun Alcatraz, though, okay? <laughs> You're stuck on the island, but you do get to play the games. Fun so. Alcatraz. <laughs> All right. That's like a rebranding <laughs> of a prison. Come, it's fun. The second part of this game, which I thought was very interesting, is the fact that it is a puzzle-style game. So you're putting all yeah. these pieces together in a puzzle formation to basically, like, Make it so you get to put your butterflies on things. This looks very Carcassonne, very lanterns. Yeah, and you're not only trying to get, in this picture here, the flowers, you're also trying to get the butterflies in, like, in encased in those gardens. So, like, you see here in the yeah. middle, the two butterflies that are right. surrounded by in flowers. Like the green grass area. Yeah. yeah, and I thought that was so interesting because you're really challenged with Again, you're challenged with a lot of choices here. It's a simple mechanic with a lot of choices on, okay, am I going to be building stuff for flowers that I need, or am I going to be getting points for butterflies, you know? And you're also kind of pushing your luck, it seems like, to build larger flower, like flower enclosures that have more tiles, yeah. because then you get bonuses. Mm -hmm. So if it's just the two, like you see the little purple one, it's yeah. like a square, y you don't get as many bonuses as if you build a bigger one. So, so I like that idea of like, oh, am I going to be able to finish this and get like the bigger bonus? Right. And Alan, this is for one to four players on that. Uh, we oh played yeah. with, I want to say three, I think there was, and it played perfectly fine. It was fantastic. I didn't get a chance to play it for two, so I don't know about that. Um, the third portion of this is the area control, which is actually on the flowers. I don't know if okay. Yeah, it has like yeah. a little. It has like a you little, little clips. face. It shows the numbers, yeah. right? And then whoever has the most on each set of flowers gets extra points. And yeah. it's friendly ties, right? And exactly. So yeah. and that was really interesting too, because usually I'm not a huge fan of friendly ties, but it really did allow you to go, okay, I'm tied here. Like, I'm going to go over to some other flowers over here and try to collect the most points over here. So you kind of, like, spread out more. But that was also great because it created a lot of not only diversity on who was on what flowers, but if somebody wanted to take that other flower from you in a round, they could yeah. because you usually left them pretty you're light. you're busy working. You're, yeah, you're putting yeah. In just enough and you're like, oh, dang it, to I gotta try go to back. secure it but still spread out. Right, right. I can exactly. See that. And the caterpillars in this are they're your sort of like catch up mechanic to the bidding because it does make it so you it changes your player or order. Yeah. Yeah. This was a solid game for it being so dang pretty and <laughs> light. Like usually pretty and light, I'm like, uh You don't expect good mechanics. Yeah. You think it's just gonna be fluffy and Exactly. Silly and I, I was I was expecting this to be yeah. like, hey, this is gonna be a fun thing to introduce to gateway gamers, which it is. But it's also got so much strategicness here that, like, the strategic heart in me is like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, so package. many. It is the total package for me, guys. Like, well, you're not making this any easier for I'm me. I'm so sorry. I back all the and things. it's $39, uh, Greg. <laughs> no excuse. It's <laughs> affordable. I, I wanted to point out the designer, J.B. Howell. He's the designer of Reavers of Midgard. So that's yeah. one that's on the fringe of coming out. So, I mean, this is a tried i mean he's, he's designed other things as well but that's the latest hotness that's coming out from him so yeah he's a tried and true designer as well i got to play uh, a demo of reavers at a con as well and that that was it's excellent so mm -hmm. um you kind of do have the complete package here yeah it looks good good mechanics good designer a publisher you can trust the pr it's like your safest bet i feel like of all four Right. It, it might not be the, the, you know, there might be other ones where the mechanics or the style of play appeals to you more this week. Right. But I feel like this is the safest bet for, 
you know, where to put your money um, based th- off of the sort of pedigree of the designer and the publisher and all that. I think so, too. Yeah. As far as all of the games, this week this does have a really great pedigree to it. It's going to deliver, you know. Right. Um, because it's Colossal. They've done a lot of stuff on Kickstarter and yeah. everything. It looks fantastic. And Colossal saying go down to some of the stretch goals here where you have the Predator card and tokens. Look Ooh, you got little you. frogs. Scroll. I know. They're like, Scroll. quickly, go down Psh. to all the good stuff. <laughs> 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 oh yeah so the deluxe version on this dr glory hog brings up it's gonna have like little gnomes and Ooh. stuff dr glory hog? Oh, yeah I've that one guy I've that one that one fan of ours yeah yeah, I yeah. Mean he's, he's pretty loyal yeah and <laughs> <laughs> poor dr glory hog <laughs> He had to go to forced fun at work today. Forced fun? <laughs> yes. Once again, the whip's out. <laughs> go have fun, <laughs> peon. So the it's going to have, I know it's going to have the gnomes in it. And, I, you know, I can't cannot remember for the life of me everything that the deluxe version had in it. But I remember looking at the deluxe and I was, like, unsure of if I was going to get that one or not. Right. Because I didn't know if, like, I, oh, and they were going to do, like, wooden caterpillars and stuff like that. Right, right. Let's see here. Oh, <laughs> Alan's like, I'm on both feeds so I can see Colossal Games commenting. That's a good idea. Hopefully I can figure out how to get all the chats together in the future, Alan. That would be lovely. Hopefully in the future, <laughs> okay? And Dr. Glorihog says, I'm usually not into tile placement, but this one was fun. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks so much for all of our normal guests joining us today, like Vincent, and I think I saw MM up there and stuff. Yeah, our regulars. Like, yeah, our regulars. And I don't know, like, this was, ooh, okay, so new goal cards here where you get extra points for goals and stuff like that. We got some bird module. a bird module. Aw, the little meeples. gardener meeples. The little stickers. It's the stickers. So the, the, yeah. the base game, I believe, comes, comes with, with the meeples. Right, but the then you put the stickers on there and yeah, stuff yeah. for it. Which is cool. You know, this one, I'm... I'm gonna have to say I definitely would back that, guys. <laughs> like I don't. There's no way for I me not to want to back anyone, that. Yeah. yeah, this was win, 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 win. Yeah. So many wins yeah. on the front for this one. It We're was starting strong this week. Yeah, it really was. There was like, man, the yeah, the stickers are new for the garden meeples, Alan. The stickers are new. Right. On that. That's a part of. That's a stretch. Yep, and for Deluxe, we do have the wooden caterpillars and then the little gnomes. And I'm not sure what the gnomes are made out of for that. I don't think they're wooden because they're very 3D. They're 3D modeled, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows? Greg, though, I mean, the real question is, would you bet? Well, I do think of, like I said, and, you know, spoiler or whatever you want to say, but of the four, this feels like the safest bet. Uh, So this is the one I'm most likely to back. Yeah. There's other ones that have some flash to them that I'm a little more excited about maybe just because this does feel like things you've seen before. Um, you know, it But an interesting combination But an of interesting them. combination of things yeah. you've seen before in a package that knowing that you've played it and recommend it and all that it really you know, makes me feel s- like this is a safe buy. So, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with this one. Yeah. It's a good game for – people who are looking for that gateway up to strategic gamers as far as like playing it a million times for a strategic gamer eventually i would say you're going to want something more in depth but this it's like one of those things it's like the way wingspan is it feeds that need for you to be strategic and to create something in there while also being light enough that Everybody at your table is going to enjoy this game, well, you know, like this from non-gamers like to gamers and so on. It doesn't seem like this is going to be like your main course. It feels like this is going right. to be, you know, you've played a bigger game. It's that 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, like the little filler at the end of the night yeah. or while you're waiting for everyone to show up. Or right. And they, they mentioned as well that there's a solo variant that they've unlocked. And so it just fits so many situations, you know. These shorter games, in my experience, are the ones that get to the table the most. Because you're like, oh, we have just a short period of time. All right, pull up Papillon, you know. And and so at the end of the year, when I'm looking back at everything I played that year, it's the Very true. fillers. It's the mind. It's, you know, it's go nuts for donuts. It's those kinds of games that you can squeeze in in a short amount of time. And so Vince, or wait, no, Ben says he wants to play a giant size version of this. <laughs> I want like the cosplay version where people are dressed up as the butterflies. <laughs> And you're like, you all right, run you. over to the flowers. They have to like jump up <laughs> and like perch. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. That would be so awesome. Yeah. And then uh, Dr. Glory Hog, let us know if you would back that since you are in the comments, okay? 
Oh, look at that. Oh, there's somebody here that oh made an excellent comment here, guys. What? I don't know if you know. What a sellout. I, I mean, mean what? <laughs> 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 well, you got to play it early, so of course they hit you yeah. up for a comment. That's awesome. It was it was fantastic, guys. I this is definitely Yeah, this this was definitely good this week. And hopefully Dr. Glory Hog will be able to tell us what he would do. Moving on though, we have Endangered. Now, Endangered is by Grand Gamers Guild. This is for one to four players, and it's going to last for about 60 minutes. Dr. Gloryog. OMG, I already said I won. Oh, okay. He's Sorry. Upset we're not paying the comments are going him. fast, Dr. Gloryog. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. And and thank you so much for Colossal Games joining us. Like we really appreciate you hanging out and helping answer questions for people. That's always huge for us, okay? So for endangered, this is like pandemic meets endangered species. <laughs> like the game. <laughs> <laughs> we should put that right? in the box. <laughs> yeah, it's a full co op. But I do like the element of like you're trying to get votes from like I guess countries in the United Nations to like back your uh, efforts to do conservation. And so it seems like there's certain combinations of things you need to achieve in order to get those points. So that part feels distinct and different from something like Pandemic. Um, not like you've never seen anything like it, but I, I just like that that was different at least. It's not just the same. There's a lot of Pandemic clones. And this feels like right. it has a slight kind of a twist on that, on that um, system. Right, absolutely. And I also like the fact that you are doing the dice assignment. So where you roll right. the dice and then based off of those dice you assign them to what you think that number is going to be best for. That and part where you're placing the dice almost reminds me of um, Qu Queenbra a little bit. Yeah. If you played that where like you have to pl your placement has to be higher or lower and so there's an element of like Tac tactically working with the die rolls you yes, have. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I don't like dice rolling games, but I love dice assignment games. Yes, yes. Because this is very Euro. This is yeah, a because overall, like, I love having, oh, no, I don't know what's going to come out with these dice, and then going, oh, man, what can what can I do to work best with these really crappy numbers that I got? Because I always get crappy numbers, guys, okay? <laughs> like, my dice never roll <laughs> sixes, or the numbers I need them. They never roll that, okay? And you got the <laughs> Beth Sobel art, which is always good. Yes. I love the cover. I think Beautiful. the overall graphic design feels a little, I don't know, just like a generic grid. It's not that exciting. Yeah. But I do like the art, and I like the cover, so mm -hmm. it definitely is aesthetically pleasing. They probably ended up, especially with Beth doing the art on this, yeah. I'm wondering if all of the cards look very, very fantastic. You know, like well, all those things. From yeah. The, from the Kickstarter. They right. do look, yeah. Let's see here. I'm looking at comments here. What um, is he saying? The artist for this did Wingspan. Was yeah, that that's Beth Sobel. Was I believe she, she did. Too? I believe she did some of the art oh, for Wingspan as well. One. I think yeah, there was three there's women. Yeah, there was a couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's see here. Aw, you screwed up. Say goodbye to the snow leopard. <laughs> oh my gosh. Kabuki kids taking it to the next this level. This just got dark. Yeah. So that is probably my number one issue with it. Is like. The game sadness the as you're doing theme. it, yeah. And the idea is you're trying to save them. I mean, you're all, you're right. It's not like someone's playing the bad guys, like poaching animals. No, I mean, everyone's yeah. on the good team. Everyone's trying to like, and I think it's good to have games with. I don't know. I I like seeing games go this direction where they tackle like you know real themes and like hopefully spread awareness of stuff. There's another one I'm blanking on the name right now. I think it's Mayday Games. That's all about like. The you know melting ice caps and saving the polar bears yeah. and stuff. I mean, I, I I like that we're venturing past just amusement <laughs> to having a message. I don't know. For me, I think that's kind of cool. Well, and I think with this one here, they're kind of gearing it specifically toward the conservation efforts and kind of uh you know trying to put it in schools and stuff yeah, like that. Awareness. Yeah, and doing more awareness stuff with yeah. it too. So it's good. Yeah, that that's really really good. But I feel but like I depressing. feel like that's their main concern, though, too. Like I feel like they're yeah. like, okay, we're gonna make a game, and then we're gonna do the conservation portion, and then heavy conservation portion, which is not a bad thing. You yeah. just have to be prepared that this is probably a game that's gonna be more educational than heavy board game. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's meant to be too crunchy. Right. I mean, I, 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 I it looks like it's in that pandemic weight. 
mm-hmm. of style games. So e- approachable, but still not like super light, not a yeah. filler. Yeah. And you know. uh, Alan says, I thought I was going to go all in on this, but there's just not enough to keep me replaying it. Now they do have two sides to this. So there's a lion, or I'm s- sorry, a tiger, and then an otter. So and we've only seen the tiger stuff on this. So yeah. like nobody's seen the otter stuff on this, which I think is cool that they're going to basically, okay, and then we're going to do different species and stuff and have different boards and everything. That should be really interesting very on expandable that. expandable, too. They could come out with packs. Absolutely. Of, of other and all sorts and of stuff. different things happening. Yeah. Like, if you're playing the otters and oil spill mechanics may be completely different than the deforestation mechanics, you know? Like, like the Gloria Hog said, it's like Grizzled or Billy Kerr, like those heavier That's themes. That's true. He says it's, it looks intense, like watching Schindler's List. <laughs> I don't know if it's that <laughs> intense, but yeah, it is It is definitely a darker <laughs> kind of theme as you <laughs> think about the loss of animals. Oh, Ben says, Ben says, oh man, this game would be messed up with a hidden traitor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> the one awful person that's like, no, I'm selling these to poachers. <laughs> oh, that's the best worst idea I've heard, Ben, right there. The, the best, best worst, worst idea, because that would be amazing, and also the most depressing <laughs> thing ever. Like you, get you your would feel card bad. And you're like, oh and you'd man, you'd be like, come on. I have to play the a hole that's like hunting tigers. Man, I'm like the poacher this round. <laughs> come on, <Sama>. dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh, that's oh, uh, that's too much. <laughs> I do like the I do like the uh, components as well. They've got the little like wooden animal meeples, which yeah. look nice. You know, the little tokens with the animals on them. I, it looks like a solid production. I don't know if there's an X factor here for me. I'm not a big co-op player as well. Yeah. So it's probably not targeting me. I'm probably not that target audience. But I love that they went out on a limb with this kind of real world, important, for lack of a better phrase, theme. Uh, I love that they got Beth on board. Um, I love that it's reasonably priced. So I think there's a lot going for this, although I just don't feel like it's for me. That's yeah. kind of where I'm at with this one. Well, I think that... Especially with all the competition this week. Here's what I wish they would have done with this to bring more interest. And this is it right here, the game board portion. Yeah, the board's kind of... I wish they would have made the board look like some sort of map or something like that. Like, if you have the tigers, you know, getting pushed out and stuff, that should have been a map there. Like, you could have kept the grid system and had right. different regions and stuff like that, but having a plain grid system board-looking portion to yeah. what the majority of what players are going to be staring at the entire game, Yeah. that, like, and I'm sorry to say it, that that sort of, like, I mean, art is really important for me as a gamer because... That, like, draws you in. Like, I, I'm i not a full Ameritrash gamer, but I do like having that theme there. I like having it tied in and everything. I like being able to put out a game and for other people to come to that game and being like, oh, hey, what is what is this? Let's take a look. Let's sit down and play. This looks interesting. Rather than, is this a board game? <laughs> like well, like, going back to Papillon, like, there's, two, there's so many games that are the full package. Yeah. Where the graphic design is good, the art is good, the mechanics are good, the components are good. Everything's good. That, like, if you're lacking in anything these days, you're going to take a hit. And I think this yeah. game, it's not funded yet. I mean, it has some time to go. It has a couple weeks right. still. But you wonder if that's part of it, is that people just come to it and go, eh, it's another pandemic-y kind of average board kind of, you know. And they just, there's, there's not enough X factor to, like, pull people in, maybe. Yeah. It, but I do like how we were talking about the ambassadors and taking them over and yeah. stuff like that in this game. Getting I really, votes. really like that mechanic and having to pick between, okay, am I going to be trying to get these ambassadors votes here and bring them onto our side? Or am I going to be putting my resources tr- by trying to just save the animals on the board? Like that seems like that would be a really interesting, like in between thing. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the hard part of the game with yeah. that, you know? I Wait, hope wh- what is MM saying? Greg Byrne. <laughs> <laughs> am, am I being attacked or is he agreeing with me? No, I think I think Dr. Glory Hog's attacking you in oh, here. Dr. Oh, Glory Hog, no one's oh. reading your comments. You're not here. <laughs> Go have your mandatory fun. Because Dr. Glory Hog's like rest in peace and stuff like that. 
<laughs> Are we supposed to actually be reading those comments from him? You know, I'm going to have to uh, make these comments bigger because I did change chat systems a little bit, and they're a little small for me today. Like, I'm having a hard time reading them all. And I can't really make like, make them bigger. It just makes – It just makes the window bigger, but the font's the same. Yeah, the font's <laughs> the same in chat. It I'm just like, reformats thanks, the guys. tiny font. Thanks for that. <laughs> Do you have the – if you keep scrolling, does it show the little, like, wooden meeple, animal meeples? Oh, kind of down thing? here? Yeah. yeah. Those oh, that was the other cool thing was the I fact like that they the did. They are, they are. Look yes, how cool those are. I want these. Yeah, those are and rad. the fact that this is not funded and I don't have wooden animal meeples makes me sad, guys. Well, there you go. If you want wooden them, animal meeples, would have get like you and all your friends on board. Man, I want wooden. Doctor Glorhog is on the attack. Yeah, but no one's reading your comments. I so. want tiny animal <laughs> meeples. Dang it! So this one sounds like it's uh, kind of a a miss for us. Not that it looks bad. I'm on the fence with it. And okay. I think that's probably where like a lot of people are is like on the fence. I, I like also the fact that they do donate their tips and stuff like that is going to go to the Center of Biological Diversity and stuff like that. And they're going to be talking about uh, animals and deforestation and wildlife right. and everything and why they're endangered and it sounds everything. It's like a percentage like of each game. Exactly. Like the proceeds are going to go to that. So it is It is a good cause. I mean, they're putting their money where they're Right. Their so I, th I like that, too. And what was the price on this here? What I think it's the 50. Price I was? think the base is just 50. Yeah, the base was 50. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I think I'm just on the fence with this, guys. Like, I like what they're doing here. And it's just a hard week to have games like Papillon in here. And me knowing for sure Papillon's a win, and I don't know 100% if this one is for me. It's also a first-time designer. It's co-op, which isn't really my thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wouldn't discourage anyone from buying this. No, it I don't think like so at all. a solid game. It looks like very puzzly and spatial. I think if you like pandemic-style games, if you like cooperative games, if you are interested in spreading the word on conservation and endangered animals, if you are a school teacher. <laughs> Like, this is the perfect game for you if you're a library. Like, these are the sorts of games that you want in your collection to show value in education, helping, you know, people, and as well as creating something fun for people to play with, like, and get people interested in those things. Like, that is a win for all of those, those things, and I don't know if this was marketed as heavily to like those education systems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Like schools should be on board with this 100%, you know? Like Dr. Glorhawk says, I'm a play before I buy while yeah. I donate <laughs> money to the local <laughs> animal rescue. And someone else in the chat say, says the same thing. They like they just rather donate, which is great by the way. If that alone happens, if this kickstart alone just gets people to go no, I maybe I should donating, donating to, to there. Know, yeah. Some good causes that will, like, you know, be conservation, you know, causes for animals and stuff. That alone is like, hey, job well done, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, Alan says, I think uh, Glory Hound is summing up my feelings pretty well. Exactly. Like, this does not look like a bad game. It does look good. I wish there was a couple things they would have changed in it. But if you were interested in this, totally back it because they are have not funded yet and they do need the funding for it. If they don't end up funding, I hope to see them back, and I hope to see them change a couple things and yeah. make this a super amazing game, you know? So, yeah, I'm going to have to say I'm going to wait for now on I this I like one. your idea of making the board like a more of a map. Yeah, I think That'd that cool. having a visual map on there is just... Even if even if, uh, even an irregular shape board would be cool. Like, what if the board was the Ooh, shape yeah, of Ooh, yeah, that would be really cool. And, like, fold it out or something. Right? That would be cool. Or on the otter side and stuff like that, having, like, all the different, like, river networks and stuff. And, like, I mean, it would be really interesting. Try before they die. I mean, come on. Aww. Come on, people. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent. <laughs> All right, what's next? Yeah, I think other people are a little depressed about that. It is a dark So let's theme. talk about stabbing people in the back. Literally. <laughs> and by people, you mean minis. Right. Next up, we have Ignite by Ginger Snap Gaming. This is for one to six players. It's going to be 20 minutes per a player on this. And it's going to cost about $89 because it has a bunch of miniatures in it. Well, not a bunch. Not like cool mini or not level miniatures, but it does have, I believe, a few miniatures for each different faction. I think so. Yeah, on that. And the cool part... And they're cool minis, too. They're big. They're, yeah. like, they're like the big monsters in Blood Rage size. The really cool part about this is the fact that whenever 
those miniatures take damage, you actually get to put like these little swords into the miniatures back to show that they've taken damage. Which wait for it, wait for it is coming up, guys. And we saw it at BGC it's coming Con. up. We did. Which and is cool. yeah, I did a boomerang on there just it is. Yeah. Hoo there you go. <laughs> oh. It hurts. <laughs> That'd be awesome. You know, the next step is going to be like, they're going to have like a little squib in there, you know, when they hit, when <laughs> little blood, a little spurts, blood out. spurts out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be fantastic. So originally when I saw this at BGG Con, it was not fully formed yet, but I thought that the mechanic of actually doing the point system in the miniatures was kind of cool. This has turned into like this, like hand management or like deck building game with not necessarily area control but it's like you a know skirmish. It's a deck yeah builder skirmish. yeah like it was really interesting yeah. well in a miniature style game and the fact that you know you could have different levels of terrain or different things that are going to give you bonuses on I the train i love the way the train interacts yeah. with you that's really cool and guys this is a modular board system it doesn't look like it from here but like is you flip over these tiles okay. and stuff and they change I, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was just, uh, I, me I meant to check, if it was just a two-sided board for a different player count or if it was actually modular. Yeah, I thought that one was really interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Let's see here. Alan says, 92% away from funding. I think it will fund, Talk about the last but one. worth the wait. Yep, talking about the endangered one. Yeah, I think that this one, this one looks really interesting. I like everything they're doing here. This reminds me of Wildlands a little bit. Right, where you're moving around Definitely. the board, you're attacking each other, but this is more fleshed out, and this has more of a deck builder element, which of course always appeals to me. Um, they've they've marketed it as the first sort of deck builder miniature skirmish style game, and honestly, I couldn't really think of anything else. I mean, there's not to this level at there's all. There's Tyrants of the Underdark, which is a deck building, but that's more straight up area control, whereas this is more skirmish. Um, this does feel like it's like a kind of a new niche. I mean, they're taking two familiar you know, the I feel mechanics like and, and putting them together, but it still does, does feel kind of unique and original. I feel like they took someone like the, like, sorcery and instance of, of, like, Magic the Gathering and stuff like that and, like, stuck it in with, like, this miniatures game. So, like, you know, you can throw a fireball across here, but then, like, somebody can throw up a shield or, like, yeah. you know, counter that and stuff. And I love how the yeah. terrain affects it, too. So, and like, then the train, there's yeah. certain spells where if you're near a water source, like, you use the power of the water mm -hmm. or whatever. There's certain trains where if you're able to pull someone into them, that train automatically kills them. There's trains that affect your weapons. So, like, if you go into, like, the acid, you know, swamp or whatever yeah, they call it. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Your weapons are negatively effective. I mean, it feels like they've really thought of a lot of cool things. And they did it in a relatively fast package. I think it said, what, 15, 20 minutes per player? So it sounds like it's not going to be something that's going to take three hours and you're going to play it once a year. It sounds like the sort of thing that you could pull out with two or three players and bang through a, a game in 45 minutes or an hour and, and actually get it to the table quite a bit. Oh, yeah, you like the board does look like it's kind of modular. Yeah, it is huh? modular with with double sides, I believe, on that. Cool, so you can cool. change the layout uh, of things with that. Says, this is where the tigers went. <laughs> 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 we mutated them into warriors. <laughs> So, you can even like visit certain areas to like voodoo doll deluxe <laughs> to get s yeah right there you <laughs> I go need a Dr. there you go Vincent right oh can you imagine you can three D print yourself well, and stuff with the, those yeah, and those then you can put them in there that. oh my god you're like when you're getting a three D printer you're like can you oh put like gosh, three holes right? in the back too please just for, just for reasons reasons and then when your spouse <laughs> is pissing you off you just pick up their finger <laughs> you're like. Mm. <laughs> I told you to take out the trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so the map should should be different each time. I agree. I think uh, the funny thing about this is you're going to have, like, in real life camping because somebody's going to go into the tavern and buy stuff, and somebody's going to be waiting outside, like, so he went in and bought some stuff there, huh? But I think that is cool <laughs> that you have to go to like certain locations to like build your deck. Right. It's very thematic. It, it is very smart. thematic. Yeah, yeah. They did a lot of stuff in this game. Like, this is not a new gamer game, guys. If you don't like long games or strategic games, it's not the game for you. I don't think it's going to be crazy super long, though. But you're right. It's definitely well, not, a, it's it not a gateway game. It goes up to six players, and it's 20 minutes per player. Yeah. yeah. If so you if you max it count. out, it is going to be long. Sure, sure. Like, it is. The I minis would want to play this as a two-player. The minis look cool. Two-player would be cool. That would be the fastest. It's 
you know, only one opponent, so it's not like, oh, who do I attack this round? It's just the board is up, pretty big. Someone else, it'd be awesome. I would have to see how if they scale down the board no, for that. I think it does. I feel like it's like. Does it scale? I, I I might be thinking of another game, but I'm pretty sure they have like a two player <laughs> configuration versus another one. And Ben says, "Oh, I thought at first Greg was saying." Train, uh -oh. not terrain. terrain. <laughs> so he's wondering why you're talking about trains in this Th game. <laughs> isn't this, this, is, this isn't an 18xx game? No, no, no. no, no. Oh, I'm so yeah, confused. Yeah. I really <laughs> thought I was going to be buying stuff. Your train just comes in, <laughs> and then you get out, and hey, then look, you start attacking you have people. You're a little tiger okay? warrior, and right? I run you over with a locomotive. <laughs> I think I win, right? Hey, now, okay, well this is getting more like. Blood Bowl ish. In <laughs> Go here ahead and try to put a sword in my locomotive. What's it going to do? <laughs> I don't care. I'm, 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 I'm moving. Right. So, why are they fighting in the first place, says MM? Can't they all just get along? I guess not. Um, that is a good question. Why are they fighting in the first place? Because Maybe they're just bored. Because reasons. <laughs> because reasons. <laughs> they're Listen. trying to control. The, the world, man. Listen, the other faction didn't take out the trash, okay? That's right. Now they're getting <laughs> so shaved in the back. <laughs> that's what happens when you don't take out the trash. It is kind <laughs> of a, not to get like deep, but that's kind of like a deep question. Like, why is there just this assumption of war anytime you have like fantasy? That's true. It is what it is, man. Look at that violence. Oh. The figures oh. in this look cool. They yeah. did a good job. So this is 90 bucks. How does that make you feel about it? Does that make you a little no, iffier? Because no. I feel like you're getting so I much like in this. Worth. I feel like you're getting ninety dollars worth. First time I designer, think I think too though. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say the only drawback that I see is that first time designer and then uh, Ginger Snap Gaming. How many Kickstarters did they do? I think they're fairly new as I think well. This is like one of the first. Does it say? Mm, I'm gonna say maybe. First created. Yeah, first created. So. This is a huge endeavor. Sorry, I'm going to like super scroll through here and everybody's going to get sick. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sorry. So it sorry. It is a lot of money for a first time designer and for. It's very ambitious. It's very ambitious for, for like a, a first, first time project, designer. Right? Yes. Doesn't mean it's not. It looks amazing, but I'm a, I'm a little wary of it because a big minis game comes out every week, although they don't all have deck building in it, and that really appeals to me. This is the one that has the greatest potential of the four for being something that would be really cool and exciting and different and like new. an epic sort yeah, of, of like oh my gosh this week, this like the one that has like the coolest like the coolest look the most potential for being like a fun exciting like this is one of my new favorites kind of games yeah no but i agree but it's not the safest bet like no. the, like papillon so right. i'm kind of on the fence between the two if i had to pick just one i think papillon's the safer bet but this is definitely like close second for me I love miniature games a lot, and this is right up my alley because it's going to be easier to get out to the table than something like an X-Wing or, like, yeah. Blood Bowl or, you know, even Shadespire because everything is on the cards and people don't have to memorize a bunch of stuff with the game. I like the miniatures in this. Like, they look fantastic. They They've look done cool. an excellent job. I love the sword mechanics in this. Like, ingenious idea on and that. I don't think that's just a gimmick. I think there seems like a real game here as well. It's oh, not absolutely. Just it's yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot of times you'll look at some of these and you're like, yeah, this game is all gimmick. No, no, no. That's like icing on the top of this cake yeah. because, like, they added something new in there that other people aren't doing, you know? Like... I think if you like miniatures games, if you like Magic the Gathering style games, like if you like both, then this is definitely win 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 for you. Games <laughs> like, like Summoner Wars or Nexus Right, Ops. It exactly. Feels like it isn't a long those line Wiz of those Wars sort yeah. of things where you're going to be basing the most, most of the stuff on your deck that you have there that you're building. Like. I feel like there's. <sighs> You're still, even though you're saying a lot of positive things, the only thing you're I'm still like. The only thing I'm reluctant on is the fact that this is a new, uh, they're just coming into the market. So yeah. just Untested. expect delays. Expect delays. Like, yeah. this is not going to go off without any issues, probably, because they're, they have to worry about the amount of cars that they're going to have in this. They have to worry about the miniatures. And it's already pledged for, like, over 100000 yeah. You know, so like this is going to be a big endeavor for them. So expect whatever they're what they're saying the, it what is. What is the delivery date on this one? That's a good question. Let's go back to super fast scrolling. I know, there. I know. I usually Take don't your super drama fast. Mean, I usually don't <laughs> <laughs> super fast scroll through things, or I try to avoid that. Nineteen but days still. They've already broken today, 100K. That's yeah, good. they're at they're at 140. Yeah. Like 
they're doing an amazing job. I think they have some great stuff with this. Okay, May so of next year. So they're giving themselves a full year, over a year. That's good. That is good that they're giving their themselves like a year. It feels like they're, you know, that that's reasonable. That that's. Uh, a I'm gonna say estimate. though. I'm gonna say. You think it'll still be late? I think so because wow. you're still going through all of the Chinese New Year stuff and everything yeah. like that. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, what what do we have comments wise here? This is not a for me. Play first game for me. So yeah, Magenta Lizard feels like it's a try before you buy. Yeah, and it's not for me. I'm afraid I can't really use the minis in other games, says Vincent. Well, you know what? You that makes a big difference minis too. From this and endangered. Yeah, and Dr. Glory Hog saying, well, do you think <laughs> it'll end up in retail later? Any thoughts? I think if it is in retail later, then that's the d the nail in the coffin for me on this one because yeah. I'll want, like like Magenta Lizard said, I'll want to try this first. Usually new designers, though, have a harder time getting their stuff into retail, though. That's true, but with something like this where it's, you know, it's probably going to be over 200% funded. I mean, someone's going to take notice Let of that. Let me take a quick look and see if they have a retail pledge Because it's, it's 20, uh, 19 more days still. So, I mean, this thing's going to be like, if it keeps going at the rate it is, it's probably going to be like a two, three $300,000. And then you think some company would be like, oh, crap, like, this is a hit. Like, let's... So they only have the pledge for a 350 for one for you and one to give and sell. So as far as retailers go and stuff like that, they're not making this particular Kickstarter for retailers. Like, it's right. not, they don't have their retailer pledge thing there where retailers can go, oh, I want, like, you know, 15 of these games and then work out some sort of deal on there. Um, so as far as it being in, in retail, who knows? It's up in the air at this point. <laughs> that, might be a good, that might be a good way, to, a question to reach out. If, if you're on the fence like we are, to reach out, you know, and send ask them a message them, yeah. and say, hey, you know, do, do you have anything in the works for this because all right so would you back this greg i think i'm a pass but it's the one that the one yeah. that has the most it looks like it has the most potential but it's just too iffy like you said with the new designer with a new publisher um and there's just enough things that could go wrong you know and there's a lot of games that look cool like this and you hear about them and they seem exciting and then they just you never hear about them again. They just fade away because people finally get them, they play them, and they're not as good as they look. So it just feels <laughs> like too big of a gamble. <laughs> yeah, Kabuki Kid said that fast scrolling should come with seizure warnings. I apologize. Yeah, I usually <laughs> don't do that in my streams because I know it's just horrible. I apologize. <laughs> and Dr. Glorak says he doesn't oh. think many retailers will want to stock a hundred dollar mini game. Yeah, and that's true. You know, it's a hundred dollar mini game. I think that your best bet is if you want this game, you better get it now. Just because we don't know where it's going to fall. You know, you might have to wait till a second printing or something like that. You know, because retailers didn't pick it up. Because as of right now, I'm not seeing like a huge thing for retailers to go and pick this up. A huge incentive. Right. I would say that if I have the funds for this week, I'm absolutely going to pick this one up. Because I think that there's enough amazing things there that I like. I love Magic the Gathering. I love miniature style games. I love the look of this and what they've done with this. I love the fact that it's a modular board system, so every game is going to be different. And I am willing to take a risk on a new uh, game publisher and stuff like that coming into the market because I've done a lot of Kickstarters before and stuff. I feel like this is pretty sound. I've talked to this dude in person. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, oh, we talked right, to him at yeah. BGG. Um, I like the choo-choo trains. Yeah, like exactly. The choo-choo <laughs> trains in this are actually fantastic. Uh, you can just roll right in there. It's it's excellent. It's an excellent it's basically mechanic. Basically, ticket to ride <laughs> with a modular board. Let's be real. I think this is made though for those type of people. If this is not for your game, then you're probably not going to back it. But there's definitely I don't know, thousand something other people well, that yeah, thought it was audience. their type of game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and MM says that outside of the minis, this doesn't look like a hundred dollar game. Okay, well that's that's a fair assessment, I would say. That do you like that there's no dice? Yeah, I don't. I don't like dice in in these I like style that it's games. All the deck building, the fact yeah. that it leans so heavily on deck building is really a sale point for me. Well, absolutely. Because a because lot of skirmish games are just big yeah. dice chucking, just run up and attack kind of games. Or you try to maneuver yourself, and then you're like, yeah, I got, I got it. 
where I'm in the perfect spot, all these bonuses and everything. You roll, and it's like, and I couldn't have rolled worse. That's <laughs> I awesome. I think if this had just been awesome. a designer <laughs> who designed one <laughs> other game that I'd heard that was good, yeah. I'd be, like, all in. You'd be but 100%. It's just that first time. It just makes me nervous because there's another batch of awesome-looking games next week. Yeah, and know? Magenta Lizard is right. Not having a retailer pledge is a mistake for this particular game. Absolutely. Because, like, with a game like this, you need a retailer pledge, you know? It's it's so new. If it does take off and it does become big and everything, yeah. as a retailer, you're going to want this at your store. You're at least going to want, like maybe four copies or something like that, you know? You can sell them on eBay later if it doesn't work out. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't maybe don't want a massive amount, but you can sell a couple, you know? Because, like, all I'm thinking is if this does turn out to be a super interesting, amazing game, getting your hands on this is going to be, like, horrible. Yeah, it is. It's, it would just be You're terrible. You're going to be like, oh, remember when it was only 90? Yeah. <laughs> because everyone's going to be selling it for 200 bucks because everyone loves it. Right. And Dr. Glory Hogg says, Magenta, I'm thinking they aren't comfortable with having a discounted retailer level. I could see them doing a second Kickstarter. I could see them I doing a second one as well. Yeah. yeah, I think if this takes off really, really well, they will be doing a second Kickstarter probably. And by the way, it. the second Kickstarter will be the cool new improved version and it will be better <laughs> than this one. So you already know this is funded. It's going to 200% plus fund probably. All right, Dr. Glory Hogg. So just wait till the next one. Would you back this? Greg Dixon, I'm assuming no. I'm a pass for now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we all are, right? I mean, I don't think any. No, of us I'm gonna say if I have the funds, in? I'm gonna I'm gonna back well, yeah, this. If yeah, I was. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, no, no. If, if I was well, a millionaire, I'd back it. <laughs> I mean, not like that. I mean, like I'm gonna go back and look at my funds here in a few see, minutes, and then like. So you really are. As long on. as Doctor Glory Hawk says yes, I'm on for this game because. Let's just do it this way. A hundred percent. This looks amazing. If Glory Hawk doesn't say no in the next one second, okay, then yeah. that's a yes. Okay, and all right. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm backing that. I'm backing that. Cool. Back that. All right. I mean, he would have said no if he didn't want you to. That's 100% true. He yeah. would have said no if That's he true. didn't want this back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, perfect. Okay. Well, moving on. <laughs> Next. Next up, we have Maquis by Side Room Games. And this is Maquis. <laughs> Maquis. <laughs> <laughs> we looked up how to pronounce this one ahead of time. Just to make sure. And this is a solo game, which I usually never do anything for. And this should last about 20 minutes. And I'm going to tell you guys right now exactly why I chose this game. Because I never, I usually don't play solo games. I usually play these games with other people and stuff. When this came up, I was like, dang, these mechanics look good. <laughs> so you like the idea of a solo worker placement. That's right. Well, absolutely. And plus, you're like spies, and you're trying to like hide out. Cool. And yeah, they yeah. have 11 different variable scenarios that right. you mix up. So it's not like, OK, you have 11 different scenarios. No, you mix them up. So you have different combinations the of ones. The theme is definitely the biggest selling point for me, too, because everything else about this, even the look of it's kind of meh. And the solo aspect does not appeal to me at all. Really? You didn't like the look of it? I love the game board. I think it looks so adorable. It's just circles next to a river. <laughs> I yeah. Mean, it's not yeah. I don't know. Are you being, are you <laughs> being facetious? No, no, no. I really, really like it. I like, th I like the board a lot because I think it it's fine. has I mean, like it a cuteness to it. And but it's all just very gray and brown and bland. Well, and it has a cuteness to it. And I feel like females in general lean toward a art style that has cuteness in it. Does this look cute? It does. Like the little buildings and stuff, are the way that they have the art and them framed and stuff okay, like that with okay. like the black background on them, like I mean edged out. I just feel it like just has a cuteness to it. It looks okay. chibi like. Like the okay. buildings look like little chibi buildings. You have your little meeples going across. It you're just hiding. It's very generic to me. It feels like it's not that far off from whatever the prototype was. Like okay. at some point, someone took a big piece of cardboard and drew a bunch of circles with lines on it. And when they fa made the final game, it doesn't look that much different than that piece of cardboard that they, you know what I mean? It just seems like, I don't know, it's just circles with lines connecting them. It's like almost like Tyrants of the Underdark, like that same kind of like, this is it. It's just, it's boring. Vincent Hawk says, Maquish. <laughs> Hold on. I got you, Vincent. Maquish. <laughs> I got you, Vincent. Maquish. <laughs> Maki. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, I do like the theme, the kind of underground movement. You're trying to get people on your right. Team. You're you know the resistance is building and all that. But worker placement alone also feels weird to me. 
like worker, pla- worker part placement of worker alone. placement is oh you took the spot I needed you know what I mean so to not have anyone else playing yeah but you're fighting with the deck with that so like you're trying to get around and not be found and then the deck is challenging you is to is that is on is where things are them. moving and stuff yeah. yeah so you could be risky by taking one channel across this canal here knowing that you know the bad guys are on the other side there and you're like, all right, well, is the next card going to, like, is this going to be it? Like, right. So there could be a lot of tension built into it. I don't know. I, d- I do. I think there's going to be a lot of tension. So <sighs> Solo gaming. I mean, that's just such a bu- uphill battle for me. But I know it's a growing market. I know a lot of people are into it. So this is probably – this is not something I would discourage people from backing. It's just it's just absolutely – I'm not so the demographic. here we go. Jason me. Day says, these guys made Black Sonata, which is excellent, and it is also a solo yeah. hidden so movement solo deduction game. game. Yep. Instant back for me. This won the Golden yeah. Geek Award or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think it did. I think four or five years ago or something, which I w- we – me and Dr. Glory Hogg were talking about it, and, like, we were saying, okay, well – why did it take them five years then to have someone pick it up and bring it to Kickstarter like that, you know? Like, to make in instead of, a, like, a print-and-play, because it was, like, a print-and-play. Okay. But bringing it into, like, an actual game. Right. And I don't know why that is, and I would be curious to know as Does why. Does that make you more or less likely to back? It makes me wonder if any part of it is outdated. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Games do evolve and they change do evolve. quickly. And Five years, although it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, in board game terms of the evolution of what's going on right now, yeah. that's huge. You know? I think that if you're on the fence with this game, all you need to do is go and do the print and play. <laughs> like, Good point. Why wouldn't you just go? There's a lot of excitement in the chat. Seems yeah, like and do the print and play for this. Seems like a l- there's a fair amount of viewers who are solo players, and they mm-hmm. trust the sort of pedigree of this game. So... Yeah, it, it sounds like something where, like, if this is your style of game, you will, like, this well, is a good version of it. And I feel like solo play is not my style of game, but I'm still interested enough in the mechanics of this game, in the variabilities that they have with the cards, and what's going on with it. That, like, me as a usually a non-solo gamer, I'm s- extremely interested in this game. This game is twenty-five dollars, guys. Do you think twenty-five um, bucks? Do you think? Do you have the thought that I kind of have? I- why didn't they, during those years, find a way to rework it and make it maybe also a co-op where you could play with multiple players? Like I don't know. I don't know. Like maybe it's, it's weird to narrow your market to only solo. Although it's a very big, it seems like a growing, you know, bigger percentage of gamers all the time. Yeah. But it seems weird to kind of narrow your market to just solo when they could have maybe found some way to make a co-op or something. I don't know. Or one versus many, or I don't know. Or even just. Yeah, just like you said, like a, a small co-op, like two-player or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like, if that particular designer, that's what they love doing is making solo yeah. player games, then that just may be their thing, you know? So you're in. This designer seems like to like making solo games. Yeah, exactly. They see, Dr. Glory Hogg is exactly. I'm in. It's 25 bucks. Cool. It's 25 bucks. And you, you would be like Dr. Glory Hawk could play something else while she's playing that's the right, solo. That's right. Well, I've been playing, <laughs> what is it, Railroad Inc. and Ganshin Clever solo yeah. and stuff like that lately. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to expand my solo gaming a little bit. This seems okay. right on the playing field of what I like. So This does seem like a safe bet for the solo gaming market. Absolutely. Like if you're looking for a solo, I mean, look at all the... The accolades, too, from, like, Secret Cabal and from Mike Delicio, who's, like, a big solo gamer. Right. It feels like this is a very, very safe bet if this is your style yeah, of Yeah, I think if you like solo games, it's absolutely yeah. 100% you need to back it because I mean it's, it's award, 25 bucks. Yeah, it's award-winning. It's right. You know, yeah. I think if you are interested in trying out solo games, 25 bucks is not that much to spend for something to expand your horizon. Okay. I'm going to keep my horizon small. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> and even, <laughs> yeah, Jason Day says, FYI, it is free to try out as well. Yeah, so you can go ahead and right. do the print and play sort of stuff. Go check it out and see if you like it in the first place. I'm going to back it, though. I think it looks great. I love the look of it. I love the style of it. I love the mechanics. I love the variability, so I'm not going to be playing the same game all the time. Dr. Glory Hog will watch me from afar while I play. <laughs> <laughs> With a single tear. That's right. Be like, oh. Can I play? Oh. No, it's one player. <laughs> Go take out the trash. And they start stinking his little minion. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm 100% on board with that. So $25, you can't not buy that, this says MM. Exactly. Exactly. There's a lot of excitement in the chat. I mean, clearly everybody's excited. And everybody's excited except for you, Greg. I'm just not a solo gamer. Except for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're a Euro gamer, though. I like Euro games. I maybe like maybe Stephanie games. would like this. She she's more likely to do solo. Oh than my me. gosh! Speaking of Stephanie, you know what we <laughs> forgot to do today? What? So let me get over to our sitting cam. Uh -oh. We have a little game today <laughs> for Greg. <laughs> okay. Do 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 do. Yeah, we don't Greg have any Dixon, music for come it. Come on down. That's right. So you're the next contestant on Greg Surprise Game. You have this lovely podcast called Hooked on Geek, Thank and you for saying so. yes, and <laughs> you guys talk not only about board games and stuff, but yeah. really cool stuff in just, just in general that you're about. geeking out about. Yeah. yeah, whether it's books or snacks <laughs> or movies. <laughs> Or snacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does seem like snack talk organically you makes know, its way into the conversation. Snack talk is important, and uh, But it's not like a planned segment. <laughs> it just sort of happens. <laughs> My first question is, one, does Stephanie watch this stream? Uh, she does sometimes, Sometimes. Yes. Okay, well, she hopefully. She doesn't watch it live. She goes back and watches it Hopefully she doesn't watch this stream oh, because, because. What is happening? We want to know. I'm sweating. Come on down. We want to know. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What your I reserve the right not to answer. <laughs> <laughs> what your favorite snack is that you hide from your spouse. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> there isn't... Uh, there <laughs> and <laughs> if you're in the comments right now, tell us what your favorite snack is that you hide from your family members so at home. Okay? I wouldn't hide anything for the reason of, like, I don't want her to know I'm eating it. Right, right. Because she's like, whatever. No, we're talking about, like, I want to eat all of this, and but I don't want like my... Like hoarding it for yourself. Yeah, exactly. I don't want my child, significant well other, family member, brother, <laughs> sister, parent, <laughs> anybody else, friend who's, like, my BFF, eating this thing that is my thing. Because I'm going to eat it all. I will, I will <laughs> say that, like, we were watching a movie or something the other day, and we pulled out some hot Cheetos. And I thought, like, oh, we'll just have, like, a few little pinches of hot Cheetos. <laughs> and, like, was it like next <laughs> thing you know, the bag is, like, almost gone. <laughs> but do you do this thing where, the, like, there's, like, one twelfth left, and you roll it up, and you're like, well, we didn't eat we're the whole bag. We're going to save this for later. We're going we to save, save these two we for later. We had a little, <laughs> a, a small <laughs> amount of Cheetos. We didn't eat the whole bag. What are we, animals? <laughs> so no, you don't need the whole bag. This is one I of those mean. experiences where, like, for like twenty minutes, we're just watching, and we're like, "Whoa, it's gone." So I think maybe maybe flaming hot Cheetos would be flaming one. Flaming hot Cheetos. Because <gasps> I know if we are both taking from it, it will be empty very soon. Those are Stephanie's favorite, aren't she they? She loves flaming hot. We both do. And you would hide them from her. No, I wouldn't. But <laughs> you put me in a hypothetical <laughs> where I had to answer. So yeah. So like, you would get. At the grocery store, well, maybe I buy you would two get bags. two, yes. and then you'd one be like, "Oh, here's one," and, one one. and then myself. you'd be like, "One in the car, <laughs> exactly. like secretly eating." Yeah. Oh man, did I clean <laughs> off my red fingers before I came in here? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Okay, so mine is Nacho Mama's cheese. It is a what like is that? it's a nut based cheese, but it's like the most fantastic nacho cheese like vegan nacho cheese you can get and there's like one person who makes it and every time like i go to the special you got to go to some special store to get it so it's not like it's even available like a password right there's exactly like a you're like hey opens up hey. the thing and can i get some of that can i get some of you're that like cheese? the crow flies in the west <laughs> at midnight and they're like all right come in <laughs> ca -ca, ca -ca. <laughs> as you go and get all right, it you get your nut cheese enjoy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's freaking amazing. And when I go and I get like I get three things of it and I keep one for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I see where this question came from, by the one way. One for myself. And then the other two, I'm like, oh guys, let's share these. Like this one's for food and this one's for chips. So <laughs> You make sure I get a third of that container. Right? Meanwhile, Just you have your own exactly. Well, I got my own. And I always hide it like super far in the back of the fridge, like with stuff blocking it, because I know nobody looks behind things in I the fridge. I listened to a podcast where they were giving one of the co-hosts, like, a hard time because he has, like, his little man cave, and he has, yeah. like, a separate fridge <laughs> in there, like, a, like under a, like, table, like, hidden where he has, like, snacks he doesn't want to share with his wife. <laughs> Somebody says that they hide their pistachios. They're sweet 
chili pistachios. I, like, I love yeah. all things pistachios. Ice cream. Yeah, I know. Actually, you know, the nuts so themselves. So good. Ice cream. Muffins, pistachio muffins. Ice, ice cream, you kind of have to hide it sometimes. You have to get it in the back of the freezer because yeah. then otherwise it will disappear too Put fast. Put like kale yeah. or something, like bagged kale in front of it. See, like my child is over here listening like, oh, that's where, you that's where you hide the ice She's cream. The They're like, she eats mm. all the Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> right well exactly exactly see those she are knows. all our she secrets knows. for today guys That's pretty thank funny. you so much for joining us in the comments and everything today we had an amazing time with you guys i will try to blow those up bigger next time so i can see them better and get more comments <laughs> oh yeah someone yes yes dr glory hog and his pistachio oh, he, likes <laughs> he does too. he does he's a smart man <laughs> what else so okay so if you want to check us out, make sure to follow Hooked on Geek, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, new ep uh, audio episode every Monday morning, all kinds of talk, including, yes, occasional snack talk. That's right. But and we have a book recommendation every week. We have movie talk all the time. We talk about games every week. We do top fives, all kinds of stuff. And thank you so much for hanging out with us today and everything. Hopefully we'll have all three of us back next week. I'm Hopefully. really hoping to get back in the groove of things of having everybody there. I think next week it's just me and Dr. Gloryhog. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and if you guys want to help support our show, make sure to check out our Ko-Fi. It's oh, oh no, it's right there, it's right there. Our Ko-Fi stuff, yeah, that's right, because that's going to help us do more stuff at Origins and Gen Con this year. I'm hoping to do lots of cool interviews and everything with people, so it's going to help us out with this show. And you already said it, but a huge thank you to the people who've already donated. Absolutely, guys, that yeah. was so amazing. The I was so surprised. Of the I was viewers. so surprised. Yeah, yeah. And. If you don't want to support us, you just want free stuff, go there and get our uh, backgrounds, phone backgrounds. I'm making phone backgrounds free for stuff. Yeah, back They're, like, nice. Oh, thank you. They're very thank cool. you. We have span, all kinds of cool oh games. Oh, yeah. We have some really cool ones that are coming up. Right yeah. now we have Grim Masquerade that's on there, uh, Tiny Epic Mechs. We have, oh, my gosh, Dice of Pirates and Folded Folding Space, Folding Space, go. which isn't even out yet. See, it isn't even out, and then you get a cool background you can be a hipster to support. Yeah, to, like, to show yeah, my your support. For a game that's not out yet. <laughs> I liked it before it was cool. Right, so at least go on there and check those out and follow because I'm hoping to have some by like Stone Mayor Games. I have great plans for Stone Mayor Games stuff. I want to talk with them before I start doing it though, and some other really big companies that have some popular games out and stuff. I'm really, really interested in doing some of their stuff. So See what happens when yeah. you watch? Free stuff. Yeah, exactly. Free stuff, guys. Free stuff. Go to the Ko-Fi, okay? Good information, fun chat, free stuff. That's right. And tips on how to hide your snacks from That's your loved That's right. Ones. That's right. Right in the back of the fridge. Right, right. Packaged yeah, in exactly. The, the kale, the spinach, <laughs> the, kale. the frozen spinach the right there. The wall of kale that has all the ice yeah. cream behind it. That's right. <laughs> 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 all right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. And now for have my, a good weird, one. my weird wave. <laughs> just for Dr. <laughs> 